Back in June, I got an early look at 3D platformer FIFO's Night and interviewed its developers. Now it's finally here, releasing today for free, two days before Halloween, and it's a fitting time. There are a lot of horror games out there, but few themed around Halloween itself. Yet October 2020 has given us not one but two, Pumpkin Jack and FIFO's Night. Coincidentally, both 3D platformers too. I'll be reviewing Pumpkin Jack in a separate video later on, but on the eve of the hallowed weens, let's start with FIFO's Night. First, full disclosure, I helped the developers playtest an early build of the game, offered suggestions, and fixed some translation issues on the Steam page. I was not paid for my work, and they haven't asked me to give a good review or anything like that. You are getting my honest thoughts, but if that turns you off, I understand. So with that out of the way, is FIFO's night worth curling up with next to the cauldron, drinking pumpkin spice lattes, and cackling like a mad witch while trick-or-treaters come to your house not wearing masks, forcing you to tell them through the door that you're not participating in trick-or-treating this year because of coronavirus, only for them to egg your house later because that's what they did to your neighbor last year when they didn't give out candy? Well, keep watching to find out. FIFO's Night is a student project by a small team at Lightbox Academy, an animation, visual effects, game design school based in Madrid, Spain. The team is led by Adrian Rodriguez, a professor at the school and creator of Flynn and Freckles. Upon its release in 2018, Flynn and Freckles got poor reviews, so you can bet he's hoping to turn things around here. Though, keep in mind, when I spoke to Rodriguez earlier this year, he let me know the aim of the game is simple fun. Now, in my preview video, I said the most important aspect of a 3D platformer is game feel, the sense of weight and momentum as you jump and move around the world, and how well the camera follows that movement. FIFO's Night is pretty darn good in that regard. Movement is a little floaty, but that's because you're floating, so it works. The jumping is precise though. You get just the right height and angle with each jump and double jump, never feeling like you're gonna fly away or fall like a ton of bricks. The camera doesn't follow you on its own, you control it manually at all times, but that's fine. I prefer that over a camera that gets itself stuck or moved at bad angles, and this one is good. It doesn't rotate too fast or too slow, and it doesn't ever get stuck behind anything. Good mechanics aren't everything though. A 3D platformer also needs good obstacles to take full advantage of those mechanics. Interesting and varied platforms, a bit of challenge, something that'll make you stop and think, a dearth of slide areas and collectibles to scour every nook and cranny for, and maybe some power-ups and new abilities to find throughout the game to constantly keep the gameplay fresh. FIFO's Night attempts all these things, but it splits its time between platforming, combat, and some light puzzles. And since the game is also super short, more on that later, it doesn't have enough room to stretch its legs, or tail, or whatever ghosts have. The best platforming sections come near the start of the game, in the library level and against the first boss, a possessed stove with a silly mustache and chef hat. The library is great, the best part of the game. It works so well because it combines all those ingredients I mentioned earlier. Simple puzzles and having to hit some levers in the right order, needing to time your jumps between rotating and shifting platforms, some enemies to keep you on your toes, and a couple of optional side areas tucked away with extra collectibles. Sadly, the rest of the game doesn't quite live up to the library. Most other platform heavy areas either only have simple obstacles or none whatsoever. For example, the last level of the game has these platforms that move back and forth, but there's not many of them, they're super slow, and they're close enough together that it's easy to jump between them. The level design in this regard is very basic. You're usually jumping up static platforms that pose little to no challenge. It's a shame because the level layouts themselves are fantastic. They're super intricate with a lot of of side paths and different ways to go. You start in the mansion from the foyer, going upstairs to bedrooms with lots of side rooms, then open the door to the library, which is the best part of the game, then onto the kitchen for an elaborate boss fight. You then go out the back to the garden cemetery, maneuvering around all these vines and fences with a river running through it all. It's almost like a maze, unlocking gates so you can get these exploding pumpkins to follow you and blow up these blocks. Then you go underground to this massive crypt with a big moving set of halls in the middle that you have to rotate rotate, all surrounded by lava. Early on, you unlock this ground pound ability that forces you to backtrack to other areas you've already been to to open up new areas. Levels connect together, and while it's not open world, it still feels like it takes place in one confined area, like Shadow Moses or Spencer Mansion. The problem is, the ground pound is the only ability you ever really pick up. I thought you'd be getting a new ability in each level that'd force you to go back to old areas, but that isn't the case. As it is, once you get this power up about a third of the way through 
through the game, FIFA's Knight doesn't have anything new up its sleeve. I think having more abilities like this could not only have added new gameplay mechanics, but it could have opened up more areas for backtracking, like in Metal Gear Solid or Resident Evil. You know, make this a proper Metroidvania. That kind of ties in with the length and size of the game too. This is a short game, it'll probably only take a seasoned platformer fan about two and a half hours to complete, maybe three tops. There's only three levels, the mansion, the garden, and the underground area. It doesn't sound like much, but again, the levels are extensive. But let's try and keep in mind who made this game and why. This is a team of college students. Most have little to no experience in practical game development. And you know, we've kind of got a pandemic going on right now. And they're making the game with a goal of simplicity and family-friendly fun. This isn't supposed to be as hard as Crash Bandicoot 4 or as inventive as Snake Pass. It's basically a university project. The story is just as simple, so there's not much of a plot at all. There's a small opening cutscene when you first enter the mansion that tells you about these three magical candies. They chill in the basement, but someone's taken them, which might lead to something bad. And that's it. You can go down to the basement where a skull tells you that the candies are gone and that you should get them back. There's also some dialogue with the final boss, but it's not much. The rest of the plot you'll have to find on the Steam page where it goes into a little more detail about the mansion and what your goal is. The art style and visual design choices are spot on. There's an attention to detail you wouldn't expect to find in such a small scale game. Cobwebs and dust are built up in every corner of the mansion. Books pile up in hallways and their pages go flying if you hit them. And these ghostly spirit things pop up every so often with a faint moaning sound in the background. Hitting barrels will send wooden splinters flying and knocking enemies out send them falling backwards before they evaporate in a purple cloud of dust. I love it when games don't spam information through the UI and FIFO's Knight does a great job of that. Rather than a standard health indicator, hit points are represented as a faint light emitting from FIFO. Green means you're at full health, two shades of yellow show you've taken a hit, and red means you're about to die. We've seen this in other games, but it's little stuff like that which shows just how much care and thought went into this game. You'd expect a free game by a bunch of college students to sacrifice quality in certain areas, but that's not the case here. There are some differences to the beta I played. It's more difficult owing to more enemies, faster enemy spawn-ins, and some enemy types that are harder to beat, like upgraded versions of books that take four hits to kill instead of two, or fake candy corn spiders that activate only when you get close to them. Objectives now pop in in the top right of the screen so you always know what to do. Uh, the bugs I pointed out in my playtesting are all fixed too, so it's nice to feel like I had some impact in the game, however minor. And your boy's got his name in the credits, so thanks to the team for that. I wasn't expecting that when I saw it pop up. PlayStation Spain nominated FIFOS Knight as a finalist in 2019's PlayStation Talents competition, and it's not hard to see why. FIFOS Knight isn't a game that's going to blow anyone's socks off, but it's not trying to. As Rodriguez told me in our interview, FIFOS Knight is a small tribute or homage to those 3D platformers from the 90s and 2000s era that we love so much. It's got some issues, and it's not trying to reinvent the wheel, but it is a simple, fun platformer modeled after games its creators loved from back in the day. At that, it succeeds with flying colors. And it's free. Not free to play, but free. I've played paid games that are way worse than this, and that's not a backhanded compliment. This is really a fun game. There are plenty of other 3D platformers on the market these days, especially from indie developers. If you want to see my review of another recent one, check out my video on Unbox Newbie's Adventure, a 3D platformer I absolutely love. Or if you're looking for something else entirely, my last video looked at the sudden rise of Among Us, two years after its release. It's a really fascinating story that involves South Korea hackers and stick figures. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.